Hello and welcome to Enlightened Empaths, your community for the spiritually awakened, where we discuss, explore, and connect with fellow empaths, healers, intuitives, and seekers. So what we want to talk about this week is an email that Denise and I received from a listener and a former student of ours that just really touched our heart. And we feel like it's something a lot of us have wondered or reflected upon in different areas of our own life. So just take a minute to listen to this this person's words and and see what you feel. And then Denise and I are going to try to try to lend our two cents to it, right? Yeah, we're just going to have a conversation about it and see, you know, what we each feel about it. And sometimes when we have these chatty shows, it just seems like hopefully we share some things that resonate with the listeners or they say, oh, that's what I would say, or that's what I was thinking too, because we are in this to build more community. That's our number one reason, reason for wanting to do the show is to just help each other realize we're not in this alone. And we do have a strong community of people. I and- think we need each other right now. Boy, do we ever. And you and I have not discussed this email. I just sent it to you and said, I think this would be a great show. And you said, I was thinking the same thing. So I don't even know what your viewpoints are on all of this, which I think will be fun. That makes it even better. I think so. Okay. So the email starts off. My question to you is, can you manifest something if it is not in the blueprint of your life plan? I'm asking this because I've been trying to call in a romantic partner for the past three years. I put myself on multiple dating apps, joined community groups with people who have shared interest, connected with professional matchmakers, and shared my intention with my friends and family that I'm ready to call in a strong partner to enjoy life with. From a metaphysical perspective, I've done cord cutting meditations to let go of past lovers, done releasing ceremonies to shed past hurts during the full moon, used feng shui principles to prime my home to welcome love, listened to love meditations before bed, wrote out all the characteristics I'd like to find in a partner, and then placed a rose quartz on top of my handwritten list and made a vision board. I've also practiced visualizing myself with a partner enjoying activities together. Finally, I've asked my angels, guides, and ancestors for help. I've also done the personal work of going to therapy and working through past hurt and trauma. I've explored different therapy modalities, such as inner child therapy and family constellations, as my goal has been to step into a relationship as the healthiest version of myself. Additionally, I've participated in Reiki energy healing. Although I've tried to pursue this goal with a series of diverse actions, there has been no progress. I'm able to meet men and go on dates. However, it has not transpired into any type of meaningful connection. After each time I connect with a man, either he or I are not interested in pursuing a connection, and so it falls flat. The cycle starts over, and it's become rather draining after years in this circular motion. This has then caused me to ask, why? Is there some block or dynamic that I'm completely unconscious of? Am I missing a crucial step in manifesting this desire? Did I make a life plan before incarnating into this life to be alone and not partnered? My question to you is, If this is the case, do you believe that people can change that and manifest something that is their heart's desire now that they are experiencing this lifetime? Again, I'm not sure what else to explore or what could be causing the block, so I wanted to see if you had any thoughts. Okay, so I I have a lot of thoughts. I'm sure you do too, Denise, but what's your first reaction to hearing that email? Well... First and foremost, I always go by the premise of change and free will, that we're in control of so many things and we often make choices at an intersection in our life and it can change the trajectory of things. What I, is impressive as all out is how much this person has put into this, like everything, check, 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 has really gone through everything humanly possible to try and bring this in. But what I love is I don't get any sense of desperation from this note. There's nothing that feels, uh, oh, I need this or, or it, it doesn't feel like it's it's aching or sending out that en- energy. It feels very, very proactive. The only thing I could think of that wasn't on the list was, is this something that is uh, residual from another lifetime that's been passed over? Could be. That's very, very true. 
I believe strongly that we do set out certain challenges and opportunities in our life path before we come to earth, right? The soul plan. Right. But I also believe just as strongly that one of the perks and challenges of being on earth is we do have this gift of free will. So that's hard, right? Because it's all on you, Mm -hmm. but it's also a blessing because we have the free will to change it. So I believe very, very strongly that yes, we can change some of the things we have laid out in our soul plan, but maybe just maybe this struggle is part of her soul plan, right? Because without this struggle, without this seeking for this partner, would she have done all this beautiful work? Right. And the person who sent this attached a photo and they're stunning and charismatic and beautiful and all. So there's, it, it just, there's a joyous energy from the picture that was sent. I always say to people that are looking for a relationship, and you can feel the difference is, do you want someone or do you need someone? And if you want someone, it changes the whole energy of attraction that you're going to bring in. If you need someone, it it sends out a different vibration. Yeah, that's very, very true. That's true for all manifesting. We can manifest what we want, but it's very hard to manifest what we need, like meaning what we're really, really, really desiring. It's got to be that that tricky balance of wanting it, but not not needing, not having to have it. And that's hard. And so with the question, you know, do you believe that people can change that and manifest something that's in their heart's desire? I do. I really do believe that. But then when you get into, you know, a couple of things that I wrote down as you were reading this was it's very admirable. This person isn't willing to settle, isn't willing to make it fit, isn't willing to, oh, well, this person was okay, but that is huge. That is so, so huge because it's not losing themselves in the situation. Right. Exactly. Now I've I have a lot of single friends and newly divorced friends and they have they have shared very very similar stories with me especially with the dating apps of you know just saying you got to kiss a lot of frogs right haven't you heard that Mhm yes that it's it's really really hard Now she referenced a time period of 3 years so I don't know if this is something she's been looking for her whole life or just the last 3 years and one thing that I kept thinking about was timing You know, because I I have a good friend from my book club and, you know, she was on the dating apps, oh, at least three years. And when she finally met her person, he was married that that whole time. And Mm -hmm. so it's almost like, you know, she wanted this relationship and, you know, I feel like she was meant to be with this guy, but he was married. And so when they met, he was newly divorced and he was, you know, ready to get back out there. But obviously it wasn't going to happen in that time period that she was seeking it because he wasn't at that juncture. So I wonder if this listener's person is there, but the timing is off right now. Right. And the past three years, that's the whole pandemic. True. That we that is hard to base anything on that time frame. And what another thing that pops in is we've talked about this a lot. Many people are feeling this, that there are big transitions happening right now. There's a big period of release that we're in. Is that part of this for this person is needing to release, needing to put it to rest, like is really being given the silver platter of what do you want to manifest and co-create is doing all the work, is showing up, is putting out that vibration. But I agree with you. Maybe that person wasn't ready to come in yet. Yeah. I mean, it really could be that. And then we come to the most important part. Well, I don't know if it's the most important part, but in my experience, it has been because I've got the passion. I've got the ideas. I've got the belief. I've got the visualization. I've with manifesting. I always have to work on the surrender part, right? Where you just Mm -hmm. give it up and say, okay. And I feel like she's there because she's realizing I've done all the work. I've done the meditations, the cord cutting, the therapy. I've done, I've incorporated Reiki. I've all the, she's done it all. And now she needs to rest easy in her heart, knowing I've done everything I can. It's up to you universe and just let it go. See, I love that because that's the same premise as asking for a sign and then letting it, forgetting about it. Please show me a blah, blah in three days. And I'll know that's my choice to make, or they'll know it's you in spirit. 
But if we keep looking for it or we keep pushing or we keep trying to make it happen, it usually doesn't. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, think about when you're trying to chase something, it gets further and further away from you. And that's hard. And something I'd love for everyone to think about, look back at your life path and and think about different areas of your life that you had a very hard time manifesting or achieving. There's usually an area for everyone, right? Whether it's organization or a partner or a career or financial stability, whatever it is, there's usually something that'll pop right into your head. Now, for me, it was always my writing career and it was really bothering me. I was able to work for a newspaper and get a column online and do some freelance work. And I was able to be a published writer, but not in the way I wanted to be. And I wanted it badly. And like we were saying before, I needed it, right? Mm -hmm. And I'd done all the work. I'd taken all the classes, blah, blah, blah. And I finally hit this point where I was like, okay, like I've done everything I can. I've researched, I, I mean, the work that goes into learning how to write a query alone, right, is a, is, is a whole, I don't know, five-part episode show. So I, I did all the work. I've done all the studying, worked with great writers, all of that. And I thought, hmm, okay, I just need to let this go. And what I realized was that I wasn't really writing for anyone. I wasn't writing for certainly not accolades. I was writing for me. It was a way for me to figure out who I am and where I was at this stage of my journey and what I and what I wanted to say and what I was thinking about. And once I realized that I just wanted to write for me and just kind of let it go and thought, well, I'm just going to keep writing. Like even if nobody ever sees it, I'm just going to keep writing. That's when that's when the wheels started. And that's when I started getting progress in terms of, you know, more and more agents getting back to me. I think I've said before in the show, though, it wasn't until I got pissed off and angry, like, come on, I've put all <laughs> that I really started to manifest it, not suggesting that for our sweet uh, intro, like this listener just sounds so intelligent, not suggesting that she get angry, but that sense of I've done everything I can, I'm giving it up to you, your universe, I'm giving it up to the higher power. That's hard, but I think that's the stage that she's almost at. And I think that's the stage we all have to reach before manifestation can occur. Again, give credit where credit's due. The fact that this person has done the personal work, has gone to therapy, has worked through the past hurt and trauma, has tried different modalities to to heal, to become more connected with who she really is and what she wants in her life. That takes time. And so what I'm thinking is if you've had, uh, you've dated the same person with the same face or your friendships have ended up the same way repeatedly, or if there's a, a pattern to it, is all of this work she's doing, building a new foundation for what's coming in with the reciprocity and the respect and the give and take that she's looking for that she wouldn't have been capable of receiving prior to. Yeah, I think that's, I think that's great. That's a fantastic points. We've got to do the groundwork. We've got to do the inner work. We've got to lay that foundation. And that's what she has done. I think trying to manifest love, though, is a deeper issue than trying to manifest a book contract or a new job or, I don't know, more money. It's it's so personal. And when and when you put yourself out there, there's such a vulnerability that I do think it can make us just pause and go, oh, do I really want it? Like when she talked about the cyclical nature of going out and meeting someone and realizing it's not a connection and then going back out there, there's something different about that from the other types of things we we try to manifest. And I, I think it's the vulnerability. What, what do you think? I think it's the vulnerability. I also think that you can't control it because someone else has that free will as well. So you may meet someone and say, well, this feels good, but if it doesn't for them, because they're going to bring all their stuff onto the path. But with, I think your book example is a really good point because you did the steps, you let it go. You, you finally decided I'm just going to do this for myself because I love words. I love writing. I'm going to write whether anyone reads it or not. That's not the same as a relationship as manifesting a loving relationship because there's other players involved. Exactly. 
And and that's that's a big one. But I do think you're spot on with the the vulnerability, especially when there seems to be a, what's a, a PC. Uh, there seems to be often. I'm not going to say all the time, a lack of transparency in people presenting who they really are. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that can be tricky and that can throw up trust flags, which is very, very hard. Yes. I also think that sometimes, especially for those of us who are empathic and intuitive, we'll get a feeling of something big coming our way quite a while before it comes our way. Do you have yes. that, Denise? Like, I'll get a feeling that, ooh, something good is coming. And and I'll get I'll have a dream about it. I'll what have you. Like, for example, I kept having a recurring dream that my friend was going to be proposed to. And it was on a camping trip, it was in the woods, it was all this stuff. You know, I told her and she was like, No, he's not gonna propose that. No. And it happened, but it was like a year and a half after those dreams had finished. So sometimes in my own life that'll happen too, where I'll get a feeling like, ooh, something good is coming. And you know conversely too. And then it'll, it won't transpire for several months. So I wonder if she's being propelled on this path these last three years to clear the way for this love to enter. And to get all the, um, there's not going to be any doubt for this person when that man arrives in her life, because she knows exactly what she doesn't want. So it's perfect. Yeah, it really is. And I think Keeping ourselves, something that I I do a lot when I'm trying to manifest something, once I surrender it, I try to keep busy and distract myself from it. Yes. So I think it's a good idea at this stage of what she's been doing to try to maybe get off the dating apps, not work with a matchmaker, just, just stop all of that, just surrender and just focus on the little things. I don't know why, Denise, this always helps me. And I think it's so trivial and small, but just the other day, my friend said, the best piece of advice you ever gave me was to focus on the little joys in each day. And I was like, I said that, and <laughs> she reminded me of this conversation. And I don't know if you do this, but when I get really stressed out or in my head, or um, I'm feeling overwhelmed with a big issue, like this listener is, I try to just tuck in, you know, and I'll watch a good cozy show that makes me happy, or I'll reread a book that I just love and adore, or I'll just hide away in a library for two hours and find a new book or little things, stupid things that make me happy. I'll make my peanut butter chocolate brownies. That makes me ridiculously happy. I'll go for a walk by the ocean. I'll listen to uplifting, happy music, stuff like little tiny things like that in my day are are like Legos. They're like little building blocks. They stick together and they build me back up. And you're taking care of yourself. Yeah. Yeah. It's so huge. I think it helps to kind of distract us when we've decided to set this this period of surrender in 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 the forefront of our path. It's not easy. No, no, it isn't easy. And it kind of leads into a, another topic that you had mentioned of the self-acceptance. And this person is doing all this work, letting go of, accepting, saying, but feels ready to do this. And it will be interesting to see. I, I hope the person who sent this in will let us know when this, this all starts to come to fruition, because don't you have a really strong, good feeling about this for this person? I do. Yes, I I do. I do. And I have, I have one more suggestion before we take a quick break. And that is start if, if, if you're a praying person and if you're not a praying person, you know, that's fine. Just maybe set a nice intention. But one thing I did to call new love into my life for about six months before I prayed for that person every single night, I'd never met him at all. I had no intention of, but I knew, I knew something was coming and so every night I would say a prayer and I told my friend Joel about it because I was so embarrassed. And he was like, oh, I love that idea. I'm going to call him future guy. <laughs> <laughs> and I would just say like, you know, I always pray for like my kids and me and my, all my family members. And then I would say, and for my future love, I pray that they have a great day tomorrow. I pray that their work is going well. I pray that they're healthy and happy and everything is, is doing beautiful in their life. I would just include that person in my prayers. And I really feel like it worked and set up a really good energy. And there was no expectation. There was no like, 
and send him quickly. You know, there was none of that. It was just like, I'm going to do this because I just felt it very, very strongly. So I would suggest she try that too. I, I definitely think it helps. I love that. I absolutely love that because you were sending the love and the compassion and the empathy, which is what you're giving to this person now, but what you would have like you, it was almost like you were sending it before the person appeared so that it was building that, that connection, that vibration, that it worked. It did. And look, if there's no time past, present, future, right? Right. So I think that would be a really good thing. I love and that. To this day, Joel calls him future. How's future guy doing? <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's take a quick break to talk about an exciting event and class that Denise and I are teaching. Denise, when is the last time we taught this together? Two years? Uh, yes, it's been two years. It wow. would have been uh, the beginning of 2021, I think. Yes. Okay, that, that seems like yesterday to me. I don't know where time is going, but it's been a while. We are once again teaching our Mediumship 101 class together. And I love teaching with Denise because, you know, obviously she's a phenomenal medium, but it's really cool because you and I have different methods of linking in with the other side. And yet we both get there. And I think exactly. it's, it's great for students to hear the different ways that we get there because it opens them up to, oh, there's not, you know, there's not one right way. There's not one wrong way. There's, there's many paths to pulling out the inner intuitive inside of you. And, and that's what I think we present together. Yes. And I love that because we get to the same place. We just take a different road. And, you know, I was working with a group this, the past year or so, and I realized how many classes I've sat through over the years where someone said, you have to do it this way. This is the only way you have to follow me. And this is my practice. And then I realized that we all have this individual soul light. We all have this individual connection with how we process what comes through for spirit. And when you can get more solid and comfortable with the way that it comes through for you, it allows you to open up that much more to what will come through and and to make a stronger connection, not only with spirit, but with yourself. Yeah. We had um, one student, I'm trying to find where she had written this. Oh, well, here's one of my favorite comments we ever got on the class. You held us up, stretched us past where we thought we could reach, taught us how to partner and lean on each other for support. We discovered things we didn't know we could do. We will always have these tools now. Oh, I know. I love that. Um, And another student wrote that one of the things that helped her the most in our class is us sharing all of our struggles and doubts with doing this work. And, you know, with some of the mistakes we've made along the way and, and how real we were teaching. And I thought that was very sweet as well. It's incredibly humbling to me how many people formed friendships and groups that still get together. We have some folks that have taken this with us in the past that have been meeting for years now on a weekly basis, and they've built a community. So this is another aspect. It's a really safe environment to get to know other like-minded people. And that's one of our main, main focuses in doing this together is that it is a safe place to explore and figure out how it works best for you. So the Mediumship 101 class that we're going to be teaching is going to be the four Thursdays in September, September 7th, 14th, 21st, and 28th from 7 to 8.30 p.m. Eastern time. Each class is taught live with Denise and I both there together. You will have time to ask questions and share experiences, and the classes are recorded and emailed to you. So if you can't meet on one of those dates or really any of those dates, that's fine. All the classes are recorded You are partnered up with someone new each week to practice on your own time, different mediumship and intuitive exercises. And each week you will get a guided meditation, MP3, a lot of handouts. And you also get an invitation to our private Facebook group. So like Denise said, you can continue connecting. Yes. And that's huge because that has over well over 300 people now. So that it's a great way. And we have so many practicing mediums and intuitives and healers that have come out of that group. It's it's absolutely incredible. It really is. And so you can go to thegratefulmessenger.com or samanthafay.com 
and sign up. We'll post links for it on our Facebook page too. So join us on Enlightened Empaths. You'll find the direct links there. Yes, it's very exciting. And I'm looking forward to working with you again, with teaching with you, because we do have a lot of fun as well. We do. Okay, should we get back to the show? Yes. All right, so we were talking about self-acceptance. Do you want me to share my story about that? I do, I do, because it's a fun story. Well, I wrote about this in my July newsletter. So I went to my high school reunion in June. And, you know, that can be a very emotional thing, right? Mm -hmm. Have you you done a reunion? No, thank you. Okay. (laughs) Well, I went to a very small parochial high school and, you know, we were all pretty close and I don't know, we Facebooked each other and we're like, all right, who's going? I'm going. And so all my friends were going. And I was like, oh, I have to go because I really would love to see these people. We had stayed close throughout our 20s and we Facebook each other and we did holiday cards for a long time and we talk here and there, but not anywhere near like we used to be in, in high school in the early years after high school. So I was really excited to see everybody. So I went to Connecticut and, um, Gosh, Denise, it was so weird because almost nothing had changed in my town. I mean, everything, my house was exactly the same. When I pulled into, I lived in this really big, big neighborhood, like kind of not a mountain, but it's like a mountainous area. And you pull off the main road and you start going up, up, up. And it's 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 a big, long and windy roads. So I turned off my GPS. I remembered exactly how to get to my house. It was wild. I was like, oh my gosh, I'm I'm home. It was great. All my favorite restaurants were still there. Everything was still exactly there. The high school looked exactly the same. So anyway, one of my friends could not go to the reunion because her uncle was having a big birthday party that night. So she said, I really want to see you guys though. She still lived in town. She's like, come, come for drinks at my country club. And I was like, oh heck yeah, I'll be there. <laughs> so we all met um, at her beautiful country club. And we all sat around and it was kind of like nervous and how are you good? How are you? And then my friend, Cindy, who is just one of the funniest, warmest human beings I've ever known. She just said something. I can't even remember what it was, but it was just so vintage Cindy and it cracked us up and we all just burst into tears and that was it. All the nervousness went away, you know? And so we're all just chatting and talking and everybody there is really, really successful. I mean, I was like, holy cow, what has happened to my friends who like I just partied with and complained about school with? They're, they all have these fabulous jobs and some live in big cities and and some like we were talking about how we don't need a reunion next time. Like we should just all decide to get together. And three of them offered up their vacation homes. <laughs> I was like, rock on people. So finally, one of them after we're sharing like where we all live and what we all do for a living, one turns to me and says, what is it you do again, Samantha? Oh my. I I just froze and I could feel my cheeks like burn because here they are with all their really cool jobs and TV and big education places. And, you know, one owned this amazing business. I was just like, uh, what do I say? You know, Mm -hmm. I'm a psychic. Um, I'm an intuitive, I host podcast. I I just, I froze. Meanwhile, my friend, Andrea, who's just the sweetest woman you'll ever meet. I had reached out to her when Sandy Hook happened because that was the town over from where I, where I lived. And so I knew people I knew were involved in that. And the first person I thought to reach out to was Andrea. And she and I, had, we talked that night for hours on the phone because we just couldn't we just couldn't believe what had happened, right? And as we're talking, I could feel her dad. And I said, Andrea, did I, I hadn't talked to Andrea in a while. And I said, has your dad passed? And she said, yeah, three months ago. And I said, do you know what I do for a living? <laughs> she was like, no. So I told her, and I ended up doing this huge long reading for her where her dad came through. And, oh. you know, San- Sandy Hook was a long time ago. So I, had, I hadn't forgotten doing the reading for her, but I hadn't remembered any details, right? Mm-hmm. You're the same way. Yeah, I don't remember at all. No. So um, so one of, I, I think it was my friend Robin who had turned and said, so what is it you do again, Samantha? And I just froze. 
I, I, I don't know. I don't know if 30 seconds or 90 seconds passed, but I just blinked and froze. And Andrea said, Samantha is an amazing intuitive. And she spent a really long time, at least 20, 25 minutes detailing that entire reading. Oh, it was so amazing. And I, in my head, I'm like, did I say that? Oh, I got that. No way. And I, <laughs> there was this battle going on inside of me. I'd love to know if you've ever felt this way where I, so many times I wanted to say, oh, it, it wasn't that it wasn't a big deal. Oh, it's just your dad had such a great energy. He was always such an extrovert. I wanted to downplay it so much. And yes. then there was this other part of me that was like, stop, stop. This isn't about you. This isn't about Andrea. This was about something more. And I don't even know what what it was, if that makes sense. But there was this battle going on where it was like, just sit in this moment just sit in the moment. And I did. And I let her talk and talk and talk. And I didn't say a word. And my friend Cindy reached across the table and she squeezed my hand and she said, Samantha, none of us think this is weird. We all think what you have is a beautiful gift. Oh, and it was just beautiful. It was such an emotional moment because I was like, you know, there's something special about those first friendships. You know, they had they had witnessed so many of my first, you know, my my first love or my first heartbreak or uh, my first time not being sober. Uh, <laughs> like so many of my first were witnessed with them. And it was just, I had this revelation that what they think is important still. And that was that was kind of humbling. And then I was thinking also like, well, wait a minute, like they're all Catholics, right? Oh, and P.S. Denise, I was the only divorced one there. How do you like that? Yes. I know. <laughs> so all of that was really weird. But um, but as I was driving, I thought, what if they didn't support me? You know, what if they were like, well, that's weird. Like, what happened to your degrees? And what happened to this work? And what does your family think? And what does the priest say? Like, what if they had been weird about it? Would I still be okay? And so it just left me with this little inner debate of how important it is to just love and accept ourselves as we are where we are without needing anyone's approval. I mean, yes, it is nice. When she squeezed my hand and said that it it just, it meant everything, but it also made me think, what if I hadn't gotten that lovely response? You know, right. don't you because think you'd, you'd still be you, you'd still be doing this work. You'd still be doing service for other people. You'd still be a clear conduit for spirit but when people know our original face, I think it changes it. I think it changes if they, it's similar to if you've been in the closet and then all of a sudden someone meets you and you say what you're doing. So I think that's even more intensified with the fact that you had such history with these folks. Yeah. Yeah. It just really made me think so much about how there are certain aspects of ourselves we have to accept, right? One of one of the aspects I've had to accept is that I'm different. I've always been different. I've always taken that different path. I've always been the little inner rebel, not an outer rebel. You know what I mean? I was never like a wild kid or skipping class, not like a traditional rebel, but just kind of an inner rebel. And I've had to learn to accept that about myself. And the other thing I think we need to do is take those things about ourselves that either aren't going to change or we don't want them to change. Like, I don't think I could not be intuitive. And I know the same is true for you. Right. It's who we are, not what we do. Yeah. Yeah. And I think a part of really walking this journey is recognizing the parts of us that are an integral to who we are, that aren't going to change, that are just like our hair color or I don't know, the shape of our body. It's not, it's who we are. It's not going to change. And we need to just accept those regardless of how other people respond to it. And it goes back to our first, when we first started the show with the woman who has done all this work to attract a partner, she's still being very true to who she is. She's presenting, this is who I am. And I always use this, the example with what we're speaking of is a used car warranty, as is, where is no warranty given or implied, because that's what it is. If you can get to that place where you're just comfortable with who you are and that, I believe me, poster child here, if you've been through a lot of stuff with folks or you've been hurt or you've been hiding 
that part of yourself from folks and all of a sudden you open that door it it again what you said earlier about the vulnerability it's scary yeah it is it is very very scary but so many or maybe even all the beautiful things in my life have come from those vulnerable moments you know Okay, so I'm going to throw a wrench into all of this because what just popped into my mind was self-acceptance based on how you feel with no matter what situation you're in, you feel solid with yourself. To me, is very different than having to let everyone know who you are through social media or through speaking your truth in a way that, I mean, are you living your truth of who you really are? And you don't need to defend it or explain it or make sure everybody's aware of it. I think that's different than having to let people know I'm this, this, and this. Yes. But maybe that's part of the journey too. I don't know. I recently watched the uh, Wham documentary. I'm not, I don't, I'm I don't not know. familiar with it. Okay. I know you shouldn't be. It's, but whatever. It's Wham, you know, George Michael and Oh yeah, and yeah. Andrew. Okay. I know that everyone's going, what does this have to do with being an enlightened empath? But but hear me out. A lot of the documentary was about how George Michael hid who he was in terms of his sexuality and the truth of who he was, right? Because that, again, is something you can't change about yourself. It's who you are. Right. And when he finally decided to accept who he was, he said he couldn't not stop talking about it. Like he, It was almost like, I think a friend described it as a way for him to pay penance for hiding himself for so long. And so I I don't I wonder I don't think what you're saying is throwing a wrench in it. I just wonder if that's a part of the process of self-acceptance along that journey is yes. when we finally accept ourselves. Maybe some people now you and I aren't those people just because we've we've got that shy quality to us. Right. But maybe there are others who need to throw it out there on social media as a way to say I'm I'm done. I'm done hiding. Well, it's kind of like doing drive-by readings when you first realize that you have a connection. Well, I've done that. (laughs) Same. You just want to share it because it's so exciting. It's fun. It's new. But the thought process was I was speaking with this woman a couple days ago, and she's developing this program, which seems incredible. But we were talking about connecting with the true feminine divine that's within all of us, no matter how you identify. There is the masculine. There is the feminine if that's offensive to anyone, those are my words, not, not indicative of what, you know, please don't take it offensively. It's, it's meant with, with love and compassion. And it's about finding that balance of both in who you are as an individual. And we were discussing that true connection with that divine feminine is a very different feeling than um, over-sexualizing or over-promoting the physicality of who you are. It's a different energy. Yeah, it is. And I think we all have to come to a place of that that inner balance within ourselves, whether we're trying to manifest self-acceptance or love or whatever it is, we've got to find that inner balance first. And that's that's no easy task, you know? That's why they call Earth a school. I mean, it's it's definitely a challenge, but I do think we can all do it. And I like you were saying before, we need to do it with community so that we have that love and acceptance and support of of other people in our lives who say, I get it. I see you. I hear you. And yeah, you're not alone in this. And that comes up. Is isn't that one of the five regrets of the dying that they say is why didn't I live more true to who I really was? Why didn't I do what I wanted to do rather than what I thought I was supposed to do? So might as well start practicing now and say, you know, this is who I am and this is what I what makes me me? It doesn't have to be as scary. You can, as you mentioned, you can start small. You can find a little joy. You can do something that really helps you realize who you are. Because I think when we can look in the mirror and be okay with ourselves, that's one of the greatest gifts we can ever get be given. Yeah, I agree. And that's when real manifestation starts to occur. 100%. But I hope that people listening to this recognize that we believe there is a soul plan, that there is a destiny, that there is, that there are certain things, certain forks in the road, certain people, certain opportunities, certain events that are kind of pre-planned and programmed into our life for us to, to grow and evolve. 
and really step into the light of our our own self-love and acceptance and inner power. But I also believe strongly, and I think you've said you do too, Denise, that we do have the free will and the right to change, amend, and alter some of those plans so that it doesn't have to be as hard or challenging or feel as alone or isolating. And I, and I, I hope that some of what we've said today will help this listener realize that that you you are born in love, you were created in love, and we all have a right to find and embrace and relish in that love. And it will come to you. I feel that strongly. I agree. And it's, we're only here for a short time. We might as well enjoy it as much as we can. And a big part of that is being true to who you are. Yes. Thank you guys so much for listening. And thank you to our dear listener for sending in that very thought-provoking question. We hope you guys have a wonderful week. Please remember, as always, to show up, do good work, and share your light. Take care.